Elephants, lions, zebras, cheetahs, giraffes. These are the animals that come to mind when one thinks of the tropical savanna. But the savanna is more than just a collection of animals. It's a diverse biome teeming with organisms that rely on each other to survive. The tropical savanna biome can be found near the equator. There are tropical savannas in Africa, Australia, and South America. The African savanna is under 500 meters above sea level. Because this biome tends to be close to the equator, it is very warm. Even in the winter, tropical savannas are hot, with temperatures ranging from 68 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. In the summer, temperatures go up to 86 degrees. These temperature changes are never drastic and the seasons change gradually. The majority of rainfall in the tropical savanna happens during the summer from 15 to 25 inches and there's a dry season during the winter when rainfall averages at roughly 4 inches. From December to February there is no rainfall at all. During these dry spells, rivers and streams dry up, the water cycle slows down, and the plants shrivel. Because of this, many animals migrate during the dry season in search of more reliable food sources. At the end of the dry season, floods revitalize the savanna. These floods provide water to the areas that haven't gotten any direct rainfall, connect rivers together, and bring backed up organic matter through the floodplains to replenish nutrient levels and bring plant life back. Because of this dry season, plants in the savanna must adapt to living without water for extended periods of time. For example, the river bush willow has thick bark to protect it from fires, as well as a hydrophilic root system, which allows it to extract water from deep under the ground. The baobab tree has similarly thick, fire-resistant bark, and it uses its trunk to store water, which it saves for the dry season when it will need extra nutrients. Termites are a big problem for many plants in the tropical savanna, but some have developed creative solutions. The candelabra tree has poisonous white sap, which allows it to remain untouched by termites, and the jackalberry tree's wood is so hard and heavy that termites can't penetrate it. Plants are not the only organisms in the tropical savanna with clever adaptations. The giraffe has the most well-known adaptation. Its long neck allows it to reach high into trees and eat the leaves no other animal is tall enough to touch. A lesser-known adaptation is the elephant's strength. An elephant's trunk is so strong that it can push over trees and wrap its trunk around it to uproot it entirely. This helps the elephant get at carbohydrates stored in the roots. The zebra's famous stripes are also an adaptation. Because zebras travel in groups, they have developed stripes in order to break up their outlines. This makes it very hard for predators to pick out the shapes of individual zebras within a group. The chakma baboon only reproduces during the wet season when its offspring are more likely to survive, and the mongoose has special claws to easily find bugs and dirt. These animals help not only themselves, but each other. The jackal tree provides a home for termites, and in exchange, termites create mounds near the trees with nutrient-rich soil. The akakaya tree allows ants to live in it, and the ants protect the tree from predators. The dung beetle uses elephant excretions for nutrition. Every organism in the tropical savanna, as in any other biome, is affected by its environment, as the environment is affected by the organisms. It's important that we treat the tropical savanna well so it can continue to be the rich biome that it has been for thousands of years. To help keep the tropical savanna alive, check out these websites. Thank you for watching.